All right. So um, I did have emergency appendix removal uh, late last week, uh, very early in the morning, but late last week. And it was not fun. And big thank you to Pat for filling in for me and for handling the bonus shows and getting the shows out and even doing a few stories on the Friday show. He did a really great job and rolling with the punches. The whole team did, in fact. And um, incredibly, at the Wednesday show I did suffering from appendicitis without even knowing it. And I had woken up at two, three in the morning with just like high stomach pain um, every couple of hours during the night. And when I woke up in the morning, it got worse and it started moving down into the right, which is pretty typical of uh, appendicitis. But it could have been a number of other things. I did the show and then I decided to go to urgent care and at urgent care. They they didn't really do much. Uh, they just like pushed on my stomach and said, if it was appendicitis, it would hurt more. You should just go home and rest, which I did. And by the time that a few hours had gone by, things just did not feel right. Uh, so I went to the emergency room uh, at Brigham and Women's Faulkner Hospital with my girlfriend, got there. They did some tests um, and it was uh, after doing a CAT scan. It was very clearly appendicitis. And before I knew it, they had a surgical resident talking to me and saying you should really remove it. We could try antibiotics, but it's not you know, it's slower. It could happen again. Um, you really should have your appendix removed. And by this time, it must have been close to midnight. Absolute chaos at the emergency room and Faulkner Hospital. It was actually great. The, the experience of something that was terrible was made a lot less bad by the great care that I received. But just to give you a sense of just how crazy it was, the number of people that were needing to be restrained by security. And I mean, here's just an example of what was going on just right next door to where I was in the emergency room. Yeah. And it just went on and on with people saying they didn't want to be held there against their will and, you know, just absolute and total chaos. Listen. Yeah. So anyway, that was what, what was going on while the surgical resident was trying to explain the procedure to me. And at one point, I think she said, you know, the anesthesiologist is going to come talk to you soon. And I think I, I vaguely remember saying that's not the anesthesiologist, is it? And it was a lighthearted moment in the middle of what was otherwise not not a fun day. Um, so things I mean, it was like all night. Eventually, you know, the anesthesiologist showed up. We talked about the plan. Uh, I met the surgeon. And here's an interesting story, by the way, about the surgeon. Uh, the surgeon comes in. And uh, I find out that the surgeon specialty, uh, Dr. Matt Nays, who did a great job, he uh, specializes in uh, endocrine surgery. And I'm thinking back, you know, not that long ago, I read the checklist manifesto by Dr. Atul Gawande here in, who's a great doctor here in Boston, uh, who also specializes in, I believe it's endocrine cancer surgery. So I said to my doctor, do you know Atul Gawande? And he said, yeah, we share an office, actually. And uh, one of the last things I remember when I was uh, sedated already with very strong Valium, which is great, great, great stuff. If you're anxious, I have high medical anxiety. <clears throat> this stuff works. I remember being in the OR and everybody going through in a way that was reminiscent of what Atul Gawande sort of developed and writes about in the checklist manifesto going through what is each person on the OR teams? Uh, uh, what is the role of each person in the room? Who is the patient? What are they doing? I remember actually saying the last thing I remember is uh, it seems like everybody's read the checklist manifesto. And I remember people in the room laughing and then waking up in the recovery room. And um, it was like an hour procedure. It went as well as these things I think can go every day. I've been getting stronger, still not back to to full strength, but it was not a fun experience. I think 7% of the population ends up having their appendix removed from what I was told. And uh, I don't wish it on anybody, but I'm glad that it was done. And uh, so far, so good. A lot of people tweeting me saying, what am I going to end up paying? I don't know the answer to that. As many of you know, I pay $420 a month for my health insurance, which is okay. 
And uh, many of you know about my eight hundred dollar podiatry visit a few months ago. I've looked up that the uh, the procedure I had, not including like the emergency room component, just the procedure can range in the U.S. from fifteen hundred to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Now, I'm guessing that there are other factors that affect that price other than just where you have it done. The average cost of an appendectomy is thirty three thousand dollars. So far, all I've gotten is the CAT scan bill, which was billed at three hundred and sixty eight dollars. My insurance has graciously negotiated that down to three oh two, but they pay none of it because I have not yet reached my annual deductible of two thousand dollars. So my approach is I'm sort of preparing for being told I have to pay my full deductible that I'm going to owe two thousand dollars for this. Uh, it could be more. It could be less. We will see. But um, glad to be back and hopefully uh, just up and up from here, but not a fun couple of days. And uh, thanks to everybody who wrote in and said, get well soon, well wishes and all of that stuff. It really was great hearing from people. And we've got some voicemails coming up later uh, related to this as well.